Well, welcome back this week. We're going to take a look at the Snowden affair a little bit, and we're going to deal a little bit with Egypt. I'm going to start off with Egypt first. Uh, it seems as though uh, the individuals from the United States that went there to apply pressure uh, on the Egyptian uh, military didn't fare very well. It says in the New York Times, it says, pressure by U.S. failed to sway Egypt's leaders. And a barrage of diplomacy. And then it shows the individuals, of course, who went over to try this barrage. And they included uh, Senators McCain and Lindsey Graham. One of the things that people have forgotten about in, in the course of all this is the fact that the Egyptian military, right after the overthrow of Mubarak, arrested a number of Americans. Now, there's something that we've really got to concentrate on in these things, and that is this. We have to be able to divorce our Constitution and the American people from what some people in the American government do. We know that we're dissatisfied with politicians who keep marching us towards socialism. Now, they're doing that here. What makes anybody think that they're not going to do the same everywhere else in their foreign policy? After all, it's the same people doing both things whether it's domestic or whether it's foreign policy. They're marching us towards socialism. So all this democracy and all that business, democracy as defined by these people is the same word that's used in the Communist Manifesto. We are not a democracy. We are a republic. We are a limited government. We are the rule of law. We are not unbridled majority rule. That's dangerous. The majority can tax the minority. The majority can kill the minority. Uh, so on and so forth. They do that in these new democracies that we're establishing in the Middle East. They're killing Christians. They're killing Jews. Is that democracy? Well, it's majority rule. At any rate, Egypt, U.S. on collision course. What a lot of people don't know about these Americans who were arrested in Egypt is that they came from three American organizations, and they were Freedom House, the National Democratic Institute for International Affairs, and the International Republican Institute. Now, during this transition of Egypt, they arrested these people, and then due to pressure, they let them go and they returned to the United States. But they were found guilty in Egyptian courts for interfering in the domestic affairs and inciting riots and that sort of thing in Egypt. Uh, but at any rate, it says in the process, as people started to look at these organizations represented by these Americans, it became very obvious that the United States government is involved in regime change all over the globe. Because these three organizations were funded by the U.S. government. Uh, this is particularly true in Eastern Europe and in Muslim states. The net, the net effect has been more militant regimes, not less. Not more democracy as we think of democracy, uh, as the average American thinks of democracy. Uh, I don't think of it that way because I know that the communists do really want democracy. That's the first step in their agenda. I always thought it was a mistake. I always thought when I read the manifesto, the Communist Manifesto, and other communist writings, that they were f trying to fool us using the term democracy. They weren't. They really mean it. Because they know that once they get the mob in control of things, they can manipulate the mob. That's the first step that they do. They win, as they say, uh, Karl Marx and Engels, said in uh, the manifesto, to win the battle for democracy. The next step was to use that mob, that majority, to bring about a dictatorship of the proletariat. So much for democracy. The dictatorship of the mob, the dictatorship of the proletariat. You know, you really start looking into these things and, and you look at them in a different way and it gives you a little bit different story. But at any rate, let's go through these three organizations. Freedom House. Uh, 
Freedom House is run by members of the Council on Foreign Relations. It has people on the board like Zbigniew Brzezinski of trilateralist fame, of people like Bayard Rustin, who I talked about a couple of weeks ago, who got the Freedom Medal from the president, who's a homosexual leader of the socialist movement in the United States. Uh, yeah, they extol other things that he did to take your eyes off the fact of really how bad this individual was. Uh, it's government funded. Uh, the National Democratic Institute for International Affairs. It's run by members of the Council on Foreign Relations and it's government funded. The International Republican Institute is run by people from the Council on Foreign Relations and it's government funded. It is a rhino, at best, organization. Republican in name only, rhino. Uh, and these are the individuals going over and sticking their nose into other people's affairs, causing all of these things that happened in Egypt to where now people are in the streets killing each other. Was the Mubarak government great? No. But is the new government great? No. Was the in-between interim government great? <laughs> that wasn't either. But these individuals go over, use their influence, use money from the United States government and whoever knows where the rest of the money is coming from to stir people up, get them into the streets for regi regime change in the name of the Arab Spring. And what we see as a result is that we are actually helping Al-Qaeda and other similar organizations come to power. Now if you don't believe that, then you haven't been reading even your newspapers very closely. Because on one hand, we've got a war against Al-Qaeda. On the other hand, we're arming them in places like Libya and uh, uh, Syria and such. Even awarding them government contracts to do things for us in the way of supplying our armed forces and stuff in these, these countries like Afghanistan and, and things. It's a lie. It's a war, really, against the American people all at the same time. These things are interrelated, they are connected. You can't look at one thing in isolation. You can't look through a telescope and say, ah, that is what the problem is. You have to open it up and see it in a vista to, to see everything in front of your eyes all at the same time to understand what's happening. And so on one hand, we have a war on terror, and in the name of that war on terror that I've just described, we're doing things like surveillance over all the American citizens. Not just Americans, Germans, French, you name it. Uh, Brazilians. I mean, the NSA even uh, looks at the Brazilian emails and, and that sort of thing. So it's, it's opened up the world. It's not just the United States. It's Orwellian. By that I mean, for those of you who don't understand what I mean there, is the book uh, by jo uh, uh, Orwell on uh, 1984, what the world would look like in the fu future. Well, he had no idea the kind of technology that would be invented where the government could look at everything that you do. Snowden has come out and exposed these things, and we've been very cautious about endorsing Snowden as a hero or a villain. But we do know this much. The individuals that he contacted, uh, such as uh, Laura uh, Poitras and others that they're talking about now in all the mass media, and uh, this guy uh, Greenwald, they are really less than constitutionalists. They're not conservatives. Uh, this woman came out of the new school in New York. It's the Berkeley of Berkeley's. It is run by leftists, and that's where she got her education. Uh, Greenwald lives in Rio de Janeiro because he would prefer to live with his significant other of the same sex in Rio than doing so in the United States. And these are the two people that he contacted, uh, Snowden contacted, and that are being talked about in the press where our eyes are being kept on these individuals, along with Snowden, rather than the real issue of the fact that our government is seriously involved in violating the Bill of Rights. 
all in the name of the war on terror, which we know is a farce. I'm sorry. We are sending our armed forces into harm's way to do one thing while our own government is selling them out elsewhere doing another. It's the same people doing it. When you've got a guy, for instance, that's just been named Secretary of Defense by Obama, who supposedly is a Republican, who at the time that he was appointed was chairman of the Atlantic Council, who wants to merge the United States with the European Union, you've got a serious problem. He took an oath to protect the Constitution of the United States from all enemies, foreign and domestic. And yet he was involved in an organization that wanted to abrogate the Constitution and merge us into this internationalism and socialism of Europe. It's time to really get angry at these things. Angry enough to get involved. But let's not get too angry to where we negate the good that we can do with that righteous indignation is probably a better way of putting it. Until next week, we'll see you then.